Hey guys, welcome to Hippie's History. I hope you have your learning boots on because all of this talk about America first, it's probably time to turn back the dial and learn a little bit about the history of that term, America first. So if you're ready to giddy up for the learning, I'm ready to grow your brain. Let's go get her done right now. So why don't we start off by saying we're really not talking about Donald Trump's definition of America first and the policies that he's enacting as president of the United States, but rather turning back the hands of time to look at it, what it has meant in the past. And I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that George Washington is the first American firster. And I'm going to say that because it was his farewell address that really laid down the foundations of isolationism, of us worrying about ourselves and not worrying about what's going on in Europe. And then certainly Woodrow Wilson, how about the war president being an American? American first. He actually used that slogan, America first, when he ran for president for the second time in 1916. But that didn't work out very well because we went to World War I and then we retreated back into isolationism. And we all know by the mid-1930s, the fever for war is growing and it looks like America is going to get sucked in. And those are the conditions which is going to create the formation of the America first committee. And that's what I want to talk about right now. <laughs> So the America First Committee, this is the one with most of the historical connections that people think of as historians when they hear that term, was formulated at Yale Law School in 1941 in September. It's only going to last for about 14 months, and it was put together by some students who you might have heard of before. Now, you might not know who R. Douglas Stewart is, but if you eat Quaker oatmeal, you might know. His father was the co-founder of that company, and you certainly have probably heard of future President Gerald Ford, future Supreme Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart, and even future Kennedy family member Sergeant Shriver, who's going to formulate the Peace Corps later in life. These are conservative Republican thinkers who believe in America first as an isolation policy that is in the tradition of the Republican Party party. But there is a problem. The problem is there is some anti-Semitism in their group, and their group's going to grow quite rapidly. We should mention that they did fuse with a more liberal group that was run by some socialists called Keep America Out of War. And that might have inflated their numbers a little bit, but almost a million members, mostly located in local chapters throughout the Midwest, with Chicago being their main location. And the leader of that group is going to end up being General Robert Woods. So they have some teeth in this group. But there is a problem. There are anti-Semitics, and they're going to even kick some of them out. How about Henry Ford, you anti-Semitic? You're out of here. And they kicked Henry Ford out. They also kicked out Avery Brodage, who was the former head of the U.S. Olympics, who had banned Jewish athletes from running in the 1936 Berlin Games. So they thought that might do it. That might be enough. We're not anti-Semitic. We just love our country. But then they choose Charles Lindbergh. We've all heard of Charles Lindbergh. He He's going to be one of their main spokesmen. And the problem is with some of the things that he's saying. Now, we know from his diary that he held very, very controversial racial views. You can hear some of them right now. We can have peace and security only so long as we band together to preserve that most priceless possession, our inheritance of European blood, only so long as we guard ourselves against attack by foreign armies and dilution by foreign races. Charles, what are you doing? That's not very nice to say. And in fact, when he gave one of his bigger speeches in Des Moines of 1941, he said the following about the Jewish race. I am saying that the leaders of both the British and the Jewish races, for reasons which are not American, wish to invoke us in the war. We cannot blame them for looking out for what they believe to be their own interests, but we must also look out for ours. We cannot allow the natural passions and prejudices of other people to lead our country to destruction destruction. FDR thought that Lindbergh was a Nazi. Now, Lindbergh in 1937, at the request of the U.S. military, actually went to Germany to observe the kind of air force and what their technology was. The idea was he was going to report back, which we're pretty sure that he did. But he also accepted a medal, the Order of the German Eagle, from the German government that he refused to give back, even after Kristallnacht, when they basically went after the Jewish race. He said, ah, I'm not going to give it back. Once you give it to somebody, you should keep it. So that probably didn't go over very well. 
well. And it was Lindbergh who fought against the Lend and Lease Act in the U.S. Congress, testifying that this wasn't the right way, that American democracy had to be preserved by defending America. But most people thought that he really was pro-German. He wanted to see the Germans victorious in Europe. And if anything, he was most fearful of a Russian invasion of Europe. And he thought that Germany being strong was the best chance to keep that from happening. Now, of course, he's not operating in a vacuum. There's going to be harsh backlash, and that backlash is going to come from some pretty notable characters. One of them is Dr. Seuss. I love Dr. Seuss, and you could see that Dr. Seuss did not love America first. He is basically labeling this organization as a appeasement to Hitler, something that's going to allow fascism to dominate Europe. And I love Woody Guthrie, and Woody Guthrie even wrote a song about Charles Lindbergh and his views in America first. You can hear that right now. Mr. Charlie Lindbergh, he flew to old Berlin. Got him a big iron cross and he flew right back again to Washington, Washington. Hitler wrote to Lindy, said, do your very worst. Lindy started an outfit that he called America First in Washington. And Lindbergh in America First was basically panned. There were many photos, sometimes out of context, they would show American firsters looking like they were giving the Nazi salute when they were actually giving the Bellamy salute, which was a different way to pledge to the flag. They would kind of crop the American flag out. But all of this is not really going to matter. After December 7th, 1941, when Japan attacks Pearl Harbor, America First is going to disband a few days later, and they're all going to want to fight in this war. Now, Charles Lindbergh had given up his commission in the military after FDR accused him of being a Nazi. He's not going to get that commission back. He's going to end up being a consultant for different airline manufacturers. But that is America first. It has a little bit of an ugly history. So sometimes when you hear people claiming America first and they kind of grimace and look kind of down at the ground, now at least you know why they're doing it. So what do you guys think about America first? Leave it down in the comments below because that's what you do on the YouTubes. How about that, kids? All right, guys, I'm going to say goodbye, but I always say it at the end of every lecture because I mean it with all my heart. Where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you guys next time that you press my buttons.